Hello and welcome back to this next exercise now, a multiple linear regression, uh, another dummy variable exercise. So again, uh, I guess I'm being lazy here, I'm copying problems from uh, the earlier section uh, where we, in this case, we had estimated this demand equation. Uh, we have found income to be statistically insignificant, so you'll notice in this equation how it's been removed. So now our following regression equation uh, has all of the same components, uh, its own price, uh, products related price, advertising expenditures, but now I've added, just to keep ourselves on topic, I've added a gender dummy variable. So what I've done now is basically I've thought, well, what if de quantity demanded, what if it's influenced by whether or not the consumer is a male or female? So let's see how that uh, turns out in, in our model. So I've taken out income, I've added in this dummy variable for gender. Now I've defined this gender variable, I have two levels, I have male or female, so I just need one dummy variable, uh, x4, and the dummy variable takes a value of zero for men and one for women. So what this allows us to do is take that original data set that we had, one big blob of dots on a scatter plot, and now I can split that into two. I have one subset of that sample uh, is for men, the other subset of that sample is for women. So we can take this regression equation and really I can, I don't like to say I have two because I still only have one model, but we can almost think of it as two, two models or two equations. I can have here that expected value for quantity demanded. For men, well it would look just like this. So beta two, price of another good, beta three, advertising expenditures, and that's it. This is our expected value, uh, just say for men. Because if it's for men, that x4, that gender dummy, takes on a value of zero, so it's not there. So this describes the relationship between uh, a product's own price, price of a related good, and advertising expenditures on quantity demanded specifically for men. And then for women, or for females, same thing, expected value of quantity demanded. Now it's beta zero, beta one, its own price. Beta two, price of related good. Beta three, advertising. But now that dummy variable has a value of one, so now I can add beta 4 in. Now, I guess I could say, well, this is now equal to 1, but hopefully it's understood. We don't need that there. So what does this tell us? Well, all of these other variables, price, its own price, price of related good, and advertising expenditures, these are all continuous variables. So these coefficients would be interpreted in the sense of, you know, for each additional dollar, uh, that we spend on advertising, or that's in thousands of dollars. So each additional thousand dollars we spend on advertising, this is the effect on quantity demanded. Same for both genders. We're not doing anything fancy. We can incorporate interaction, but we won't do that y quite yet. So the impact of advertising expenditures on quantity demanded, in both cases, that's beta three. The impact of a change in the price of a related good, for both men and women, each additional dollar and the change in that other price, beta two tells us the marginal effect on quantity demanded. The impact of a change in its own price, uh, beta one. That's the same for men and women, so these partial slopes are all the same. This beta four, so over here, this tells us, given any other values for all of these independent variables, beta four tells us what's the average difference in quantity demanded between men and women for any given stated values for the independent variables. So beta four is now, it's acting on the y-intercept. It's not a slope in the same sense that all of these other coefficients are. So let's, let's go through the exercise and then I'll, maybe I'll draw a little picture later on to try to clarify that a little bit more. So here we go down, we have all of our same types of problems to deal with. Write the estimated regression equation. So here, these are all of my coefficients. Y hat, 765.29. I'm gonna keep this to one decimal place. Just keep it a little bit cleaner. 
minus 8.8 .8 on its own price, minus 11.1 .1 price of related good, plus 5.8 advertising, plus 221.21 uh, on gender. Okay, so there's our estimated regression equation. Uh, what does the R squared tell us? R squared 71, so that's still SSR over SST. That tells us that our chosen independent variables, own price, related price, advertising, and gender, together they capture 71% uh, of the variation in quantity demanded. The adjusted R squared, bit of a drop down to 0.64, still sufficiently high, might be curious as to whether or not we have variables in the model that shouldn't be there. It's a bit of a drop, but overall it's uh, it's not so bad. We still have all the signs of a, of a reasonable model as far as its ability to explain our independent variable. So <clears throat> moving on, part C, interpret the coefficients and confidence interval estimates. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit different when we talk about the dummy variable. Each of these partial slopes, so 8.8, 11.1, all of these ones here, these are all per unit changes. So if the price changes by $1, the effect on quantity demanded is negative 8.8. Uh, .8. So if it's own price for every dollar that we increase its own price, quantity demanded falls by 8.8 uh, .8 units. For every dollar that the price of that related good goes up, quantity demanded for this good goes down 11.1 uh, units. So these two goods must be complements. They must be sold together. If the price of this one goes up, causes this one to go, demand for this one to go down. That's a lecture for an economics video, maybe another time. Advertising expenditure. Um, for each thousand dollars that we spend on advertising, I know thousand because these are measured in thousands, for each thousand dollars we spend on advertising, quantity demanded goes up by five, uh, five point eight units. So notice so far for each of those three, I've said for each dollar change, each dollar increase, or each thousand dollar increase. Now when we get to the the dummy variable, there's no more each. You're either male or you're female. Uh, we won't get into the political incorrectness of that statement. I'm sure there's other, uh, other variations for now, male and female. And this coefficient now, this just tells us what's the average difference in quantity demanded between men and women. So if you're a male, <coughs> because that is, uh, sorry, if you're female, because that's the, the category that has that dummy variable is equal to one, so a female, given any set of prices, any set of advertising expenditures, women will demand 221.2 units more on average than men. That's it. There's no each additional unit of gender. It's the difference, the average difference between men and women. It's, uh, I think it's about as simple as that. It sounds simple, but it's usually not when, when students first first see this. If I were to draw a picture, let me just come down here a little bit. <clears throat> we, we basically have parallel lines here. If this is, uh, this is our quantity demanded, and here's all of these other variables, I'm just gonna lump them all together. X2, X3, whatever. Let's assume I'm cheating. This would actually be in one, two, three, four dimensional space. I can't draw in four dimensional space. Let's just say that this represents uh, the relationship between quantity demanded and all of these other variables. So this would be that base case scenario. This is where that X4, is it X4? Yeah. This is where X4 is equal to zero. So this has a Y intercept 765.3 and all of these partial slopes. Now, with that dummy turned on, so it has takes on a value of one, well, now we have just a parallel line here, and this is gonna have a y-intercept of 765.3 plus 221, two, oh, this pen acts all funny when I write close to the edge, 221.21. So it would be the sum of those. 
So now you can give me values for all of the other independent variables, and now we can estimate, oops, I can estimate two values. One that corresponds to the average quantity demanded for men, and the other corresponds to the average quantity demanded for women. So this vertical difference is going to be that B4, that slope, I shouldn't say that, not that slope, B4, it's that coefficient on the dummy variable. So it's just the average difference between these two levels of this categorical variable. Okay, moving on. I hopefully I've made that sufficiently clear. Uh, part D, interpret the p-values on all of these. So if we look at all of our p-values, all of our coefficients that we've estimated are all statistically significant as far as all of those tests on individual parameter significance. Everything is rejected at any reasonable level of significance. Uh, oops, sheesh, everything is rejected. They're all statistically valid predictors of quantity demanded, and our model uh, is also statistically significant. So, looks like everything uh, works out just fine for us. So, hopefully that makes sense. A lot of the interpretation on the slope coefficients, it's similar since the beginning of module 14. These dummy variables, it's just, it's important to, to remember that they are not a slope in the same sense that these other ones are. They are just telling you the average difference between the different levels of a categorical variable. So here it was found to be statistically significant. We have that point estimate of 221.2. We didn't really talk about the confidence intervals because we've done that so many times now. But here we have that interval estimate. So I'm 95% confident that the difference in average quantity demanded between men and women is between 112.9 and 329.48. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, I think we'll do a couple of more videos here just to make sure. But uh, again, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again. Bye-bye.